Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy, part 4. Removing the paint from the engine parts, pulling the old wick material from the spirit burner, then rust removal from the burner using something called evapor rust, followed by polishing the boiler barrel. First the base, and this is not a good idea to clumsily pour a load of cellulose thinners on the base part on the bench. The cellulose thinner spillage will at least clean the bench in this area. I'm using one of my new bamboo toothbrushes just to check that the cellulose thinners will dissolve the paint, and it appears to be doing so. These excellent and very cheap bamboo toothbrushes are great for many applications, other than cleaning teeth of course. The use of cellulose thinners is possibly not the greenest thing to use, but at least the base is green. Jobs like this would normally be done in the outer part of the workshop, but currently in that area I'm painting the flywheel for my small showman's engine. I thought I would try this method, but the Red Cross says do not do it this way. So the thing is, what am I doing wrong? I'm using my hands on a piece of emery cloth on the work. I should really attach the piece of emery cloth to a piece of wood, which, pardon the pun, would be much safer. I didn't find this the best way to remove the paint. I always use standard cellulose thinners. Removing the paint using a lathe seemed to be a good idea, but this is far better. Just pour cellulose thinners over the part and leave it for 24 hours. And then, 90% of the time, the paint falls off. This is the flywheel. I'm just giving it a bit of a scrub with the toothbrush to mark the surface to help the cellulose thinners eat away the paint. And I'm trying really hard not to get any cellulose thinners on my skin because apparently it's not good for you. So into the tub goes the flywheel. And the next part to receive the same treatment is the crank web. When I repaint these parts, I don't think I'm going to paint the crank web. I'll leave it in brass. I am going to paint this part though, the water gauge cover. And I don't think I'll bother painting the red parts of the cylinder. This is not a sympathetic restoration and I may make some modifications along the way. Time for a health and safety warning. This is a very old engine from a long time before we understood the potential problems of asbestos. I do not think that the wick in this burner is asbestos, but it's a good idea to wear a mask anyway. When I looked at the state of what was left of the wick, I didn't think there was much of it left at all, but I was wrong. I used a small pair of surgical forceps and these are really well worth buying. I use them a lot for various jobs. I found that there was a lot of wick material inside the unit. And when I look at it closely, it does appear to be cotton. But I'm taking no chances. I've changed my Salvador Dali mask now for a Spider-Man mask. I think I will save my V for Vendetta Guy Fawkes mask for the last part. And the last part was really difficult to get out. Look at the size of this. How that managed to come through the small orifice in the burner, I don't know. But with a bit of effort, I got there in the end. And now the burner is completely devoid of any remaining wick material. Time to put the burner into a small plastic tub. All I have to do now is pour some of this stuff, evapo rust, into the tub until it covers the burner. This will remove the rust. I don't think that evapo rust is normally this colour, but I have used it before. I do like to recycle stuff like this where possible. The evapo rust stuff is water based and doesn't smell very bad, but the cellulose thinners is very pungent and it's in the inner part of the workshop. Thankfully, I need to now go into the outer part of the workshop. What I'm doing is using the one inch belt sander just to tidy up the end of the part where the small valve fits to regulate the speed. That part was missing, so I need to make one. But there's quite a lot of work yet to do before I get round to that. In this clip, I'm enlisting the help of my polishing spindle to polish the main mounting bracket that holds the cylinder, crankshaft and flywheel. When I looked at the port face, I was quite surprised this is not my doing. The marks on the port face are from the original manufacturing process. Or at least that's what I think. It's time to remove the marks using 400 grade wet and dry sandpaper on a steel plate. After quite a bit of elbow grease, it now looks like this, which in my opinion is a lot better than it was. 
Just a final going over with some Brasso wadding makes the parts shine and look almost like new. I didn't have to do that because the engine actually ran quite well just as it was. It's just a cosmetic thing. The regulator or throttle on this engine works by restricting the flow of steam to exhaust. In this clip I'm just making sure that the port goes where I think it should be going. All I need to do now is make a simple threaded 4BA valve. For now though I'm just using a 4BA brass bolt. Now it's time to polish up the boiler so it's back into the outer part of the workshop and I'm using my polishing spindle. You've got to be careful with these things. When the copper is so thin as it is on this boiler, you can very easily remove too much metal. I used the polishing spindle for the bulk of the polishing, and then I went to handwork again using Brasso. Here I'm using it on the chimney. This Brasso wadding is just an absorbent wadding with a solvent mixed with an abrasive compound, and it works really well. It's been around for years, the stuff I used to use was called Duraglit that was more or less identical and it's really good for polishing up parts. In this clip I'm polishing the brass cap of the boiler and to get between the chimney support and the bushes I'm using the handle of one of my bamboo toothbrushes. This sequence was the first polishing of about three goes. As LBSC used to say, the more you rub it, the more it shines. I haven't cleaned the brass cap with the cloth in the normal way. I'd like to show a way of cleaning quite inaccessible places. It's top tip time. All I do to get to fairly inaccessible areas is clamp a piece of cotton cloth in the vise and then rub the part up and down the cotton cloth. And this, in conjunction with the brasso residue left on the brass cap, polishes the part perfectly. And that is it for this episode. As you can see, the boiler's looking good. And I'd just like to say, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.